world of raga is a complex one it's a world of notes and microtones of ornament and phrasing dynamics of light and shade virtuosity motive depth of joy and epiphany there is a range of things that can be said of a raga and its performance we can say things like for instance the raga that we just heard rag durga we can say things like the note ga is not allowed in durga and also we can say that rag durga is sung in the second part of the night the second prahar of the night we can also say things like rag durga has angular phrases uh, and it's it has very zigzag movements and of a performance of rag durga we can say things like the bandish was beautiful or that um it was very tuneful no surila or that it was very virtuosic or that a certain stylistic or a gharana uh, features of a certain gharana were there or not there all these things we can say of a performance of rag durga and we can also say the most important and elusive thing that it created rang or that rag durga descended the the deity of that rag descended and sparkled in the performance now there is a range of epistemic thrust in these various statements that we can make about 
the Raag Durga in its performance from the very from the verifiable to the unverifiable. Now, as a matter of fact, Raag Durga does not have ga, and Raag Durga is explored in a very zigzag manner. That is the chalan of the raga. Um, but to talk of rang or to talk of the deity of uh, the Raag Durga descending, th that is clearly of a very different level, right? But both these kinds of sentences are very much part of this world. The point here is that raga, the world of raga is very complex. There is of course the melodic aspect, right, that uh, we have the melodic elements, swaras, ornaments, phrases and so on, rules regarding their use. There is the, the performance aspect of it, which is a, a uh, a, a world in itself, which involves uh, mastering many, uh, mastering the techniques of presentation, right. You have to master the raga, that is one thing, but how you present it, that is a different animal altogether. I mean, ultimately, all this is for an aesthetic outcome. So, the, the world of raga has all these three aspects. And a definition of raga must do justice to all these aspects and that is generally hard to come by. Now, um, one of the earliest definitions of raga is found in uh, Brahadeshi. I have had occasion to refer to this text earlier also. This is uh, a very, uh, very important text. Uh, this is Brahad Deshi. Which is, which was written by Matanga Muni. Somewhere in the 7th or 8th century of the common era. And this is where we find one of the earliest definitions of Raga. Though Raga uh, the word raga is found in much earlier texts also, even in Nati Shastra. But you see, raga is one of those things that has evolved and changed considerably. Uh, the very uh, the very idea of raga, what raga is, that itself has undergone changes uh, through the centuries. And um, yeah, the definition that we find in uh, Deshi, first, it, you know, he talks about the vyutpati of the word raga. Yutpati is etymology. Yutpati of Yutpati is etymology. It is how is the word raga derived? And he says it is from the word ranja. Uh, I referred to this in the previous video. Ranja, which means to color. or to please. So, he says this, Ranjana jayate rago yutpatti samudakritaha ityevam raga shabdasya yutpatti rabidhiyate. And that is, raga is born from the act of coloring or delighting and this is said to be its etymology. And then we have the famous definition, one of the most uh, widely quoted definitions of raga is this. Yo yam dhvani visheshastu swara varana vibhushitaha ranjako janachittanam ragaf katyate budhaihi. That which delights the minds of people. Ranjako janachittanam. Through swaras and varanas. Embellished by swaras and varanas. That is uh, swara, swara varana vibhushitaha. Varana is melodic movement. Swara, of course, we know what swara is notes, and varana is movement, well, melodic movement. You, you can either go up or you can go down or you can stay uh, in one pitch or you can have a combination of these three. That, that is varana. Arohi, avrohi, sthai, and sanchari. These are the four varnas. So, I mean, 
quite obviously, what else can you do, right? Melodic movements, these are the four melodic movements possible. Either you can sing the same pitch or you can have ascending phrases or descending phrases or a combination of these. Now this, that is that which delights the minds of people through embellishment by swaras and varnas. That is said to be raga by the wise. Raga Katyate Budhaihi. Now, Raga, um, you know, basically, as I said, it means color, it means passion. So, it is, um, it, as applied to music, a musical entity, it is a metaphor. And since then, since this metaphor, there have been many more metaphors, many more analogies. When uh, in, with people trying to define raga adequately. Now some have uh, drawn the analogy of chess, right? In a game of chess, we have different coins, we have different pieces, and each piece has a certain way of moving, right? It can't move in any way, and it has certain powers. Um, because of that, the, the way it moves. Um, so, uh, so also in Raga, we have Swaras and uh, they have different powers and uh, they move, the phrases move in different ways. So, um, we have uh, moves that are forbidden and so on. Another analogy is uh, it Ragas are spoken of as spaces for melodic motion. It is knowing a rag. Knowing a raga is knowing its paths. It is simply moving up and down the scale of a raga so flattens it, right? It, there is no texture then and that is not the raga. So now each of these metaphors takes care of one or the other aspect of raga. It is hard to capture all of them. For instance here this analogy uh, addresses the presenting of raga. Here uh, the analogy goes like this that presenting a raga is like oration. You perform, you, you practice various elements of the uh, performance and then when you actually perform you bring them all together. Now to some extent is we practice the compositions, we practice uh, elements of our improvisation, tans and various things and we do bring it together in performance and to, in that sense yes it is like uh, oration. And another um, analogy is that every raga is like a melodic seed. It is a seed, it is an idea of a melody and if and this when it is nurtured it uh, evolves into a or it grows into a beautiful musical form. Now just as uh, if you sow a mango seed you can't get a banyan tree. So also if you have the idea of rag Durga you can't get rag Yaman and every tree is different right every tree of the same variety every mango tree is different. So also every performance of Rag Durga is different. So this is another analogy. And then we have this metaphor, this analogy that Raga is a melodic recipe. It's like a recipe. Adrian McNeil uh, in a recent essay has argued that um, a more accurate depiction of Raga would be one that can equally accommodate its technical, performative and aesthetic dimensions and these dimensions can be mapped on to the way a typical recipe of a North Indian dish works. There is every recipe mentions the ingredients, how to use them, in what proportion to use them, how to cook them um, and all these we can think of as uh, having counterparts in raga, right? We have swaras, which are the ingredients. How uh, the 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 strength of each swara, how to use them, and so on. 
and most importantly finally the the point of the whole dish is that it should be savored right it should be relished so also the point of performance is that it should be relished so um, there is the 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 link to this essay is given at the end of the lesson those of you are interested you can read it so we have a recipe right the recipe of a dish so also we have the raga lakshanas but then the actual cooking of the dish is is a different deal altogether it's not just enough that you know the ingredients and the you and the the recipe uh, it's not enough that you have the ingredients and you know the recipe translating it into a palatable dish is a, is a different task altogether so also you may know the uh, raga lakshanas and all that but to actually perform it effectively is a different matter and finally what is the outcome right everything is uh, taken care of in this analogy as so uh, or so mac adrian macneil uh, claims it's certainly an interesting uh, essay to read now um let us look at uh, a definition of or a, a description of raga by deepak raja it's it's a no, it's a it's a uh, conversational kind of definition it's not a very formal definition he says deepak raja is a leading um, writer on hindustani music even a casual listener is aware that the word raga is used to describe the melodic facet of a piece of music he also knows that a raga is not a precomposed melody the same raga performed on different occasions can sound entirely different while yet retaining a strong basis in familiarity she also knows that there are hundreds perhaps thousands of ragas in circulation and that experienced listeners can distinguish one raga from others from this most listeners can infer that a raga is broadly a melodic structure tight enough to remain distinct and identifiable and yet loose enough to form the basis for considerable individual freedom here we have another definition by um, a western musicologist bruno nettel uh, he says raga is a melodic framework for improvisation and composition raga is based on a scale with a given set of notes a typical order in which they appear in melodies and characteristic musical motifs by using only some notes by emphasizing certain degrees of the scale and by going from note to note in ways characteristic to the raga the performer sets out to create a mood or atmosphere rasa that is unique to the raga in question now this is this takes care of lot of the lot of the aspects of raga that we have been discussing right we have uh, the uh, the scale and notes the typical order and all that which is the raga lakshana and we also have the outcome which he says is a uh, creation of a mood or atmosphere and rasa now rasa is a technical word really it's a charged word and it is problematic when applied to anything outside its original field of application which is theater and literature it is a very very technical uh, concept and uh, when we are, when applied outside that world of theater and literature it is a very casual uh, application and it is uh, it suggests a heightened sense of emotion and aesthetic uh, experience that sort of thing but uh, it's best to avoid the word rasa outside these uh, fields of theater and literature but moods you see many many definitions of uh, raga especially by western musicologists they they include reference to moods um now see all music evokes moods right um even just a percussion or a jazz solo or or an or an irish uh, celtic folk song everything all music evokes moods 
and you see look what does it mean to talk of moods a mood is different from emotion right one of the basic things about uh, basic differences between mood and emotion is that emotion is uh, associated with bodily behavior whereas moods are not necessarily associated with uh, bodily behavior so when you say a person is moody uh, you're just saying that we don't know what's going on with him or her um, if a person is sad then the person will have that expression some bodily behavior to suggest that she is sad but when you say a person is moody you're just you know not saying anything specific so now you see music can evoke in us uh, mysterious states and it does create a mood right though the our inner world is touched we don't go about expressing it in any not always at least it does create a mood one can say that definitely but why do we mention it specifically in the case of raga it's an interesting it's it's a question that i leave uh, you to think over now when you listen to, i mean certainly to say that every raga each raga is associated with a unique mood that seems very problematic to me when when you listen to a raga performed by different musicians on different occasions does it always evoke the same mood the same unique mood mood i wouldn't think so and uh this is not something for instance when when a musician is performing we are not concerned about the mood that we are creating the mood should be created as a as a uh, as a collateral you know it it's a bonus we are only concerned with presenting the raga so also when at a master teaches the raga they very rarely if at all do we talk about mood of the raga and how we may create it because it is music of course it will create moods but that is not something that i merits uh, a mention when you define raga we do speak of bhav the raga bhav is different bhav as in emotional suffusion that we do uh but it is quite absurd to map every raga to one particular mood now dr saxena uh whom i have quoted earlier is uh, here guarded in referring to you see everybody feels but, but you know when see musicologists feel compelled to refer to something beyond the rules right raga is yes a set of rules but it is not just that there is something beyond that that is what they are probably trying to capture when they speak of mood or rasa which is needless really um now dr saxena here uses the word rasa but in a very guarded way he says raga is a specific and in a way living melodic form which serves to permit and determine as a matrix the creation and contemplation of music on the basis of the quality emphasis and relatedness of tones as also with the help of rhythmic abidance or passage possibly with an eye to evoking an appropriate rasa but always in accordance with one's individual capacities for technical handling and grasp visualization and aesthetic sensitiveness a raga is a matrix in the sense that it is being a specific ground mass which is not only the regulative and individuating principle but the very material of an essay in musical creation so these are some of the uh, attempts to define raga in the next video we will look at um uh, 
classification of ragas, which is another important uh, aspect of the world of raga.